This is an aquaponics system. I love nature and I love to be able to bring nature inside and to be able to use that to teach kids about our environment. OK, so in a nutshell, how does the system work? Well, the water and the waste from the fish gets pumped to the top of the system and it trickles on the boards behind the plants back down to the, into the catchment tray. And while that's happening, the plants strip out the fish waste and clean the water for the fish. Waste from the fish becomes a fertiliser for the plants. Why did you choose these particular plants? Well, we wanted to go for something that's permanent. So with a normal aquaponic system, all of those vegetables that you grow are generally annuals. And so we want to go for a system that's perennial, that's here all the time, that we can enjoy. We're looking at ways of tying in terrestrial environments with our aquatic environments and teaching people in that process about the, the connection and ecosystems involved with that. I notice you've got grow lamps. Are they essential? For this system, they are because we're indoors, we're inside a factory shed, and in here we need some extra UV to, to give these plants a push. Now, what about the, the plant selection, the ones you've chosen? I mean, I'm, my eye's drawn to these anthuriums because they're brilliant red reminds me of cloud forest and it also makes the green look even more green. Absolutely. There's some fantastic plants in there that change colour uh, as they grow. So some of these ferns, they come out with bright red foliage as well when they first start growing and then they turn to green. We've also got some white anthuriums down the bottom, so we'll add a bit more colour and that changes over the season as well. well I quite like the polypodium up here, purely, I guess, because it's such a large plant on the wall. It's got beautiful blue colour. I also really love the adiantum, the maidenhair ferns down here with the, the black stem. Absolute classic. Really delicate. And look, I've never been able to grow them up until now. I've always bumped them off when I've had them in pots, so I'm pretty excited about being able to grow them. And I can't go past this. This is a beautiful crested fern. That's a joy to behold. They're fantastic, and the fact that there's so many of them in that one space, it just it fills the area out really well. And again, it recreates that idea of how one plant would take over a niche in a natural rock face. Absolutely, so we're creating that patchwork and mosaic again. But we've also got individual plants in here, so we've got some orchids, and, and by far and large, the, my favourite being the pitcher plant, or Nepenthes carnivorous plants. They're, they're really amazing. For any feature, they, they grow really well in the right spot. Now, I understand this is easy to construct, and I also believe you're going to show us just how to do it. Absolutely. So the first thing we have to do is make our trough where we hold the water, and what we have here is just some recycled treated timber, and we're going to build that trough out of that. I've pre-drilled the timber, and I'm assembling with batten screws. What happens next? We're going to line it with plastic. You could use pond liner for this, but I'm just using a couple of layers of thick builder's plastic. Nicely tucked. Excellent. Now we fix the plastic in place with backing. Now we just need to screw those in place. This is a recycled aluminium gate frame. And we'll use that to go on the back of our wall and we'll attach a sheet of expanded foam PVC to that. So that just goes straight on top there. Thanks for letting me feel useful. Anytime, mate. <laughs> All right, grab the felt. That's next. And we'll fix it in place with staples. So what's it made from? It's made from recycled bottles. So it's a PET recycled bottle felt. I'm glad my bottles have gone somewhere useful. <laughs> so the trick is to keep it tight and have staples in your stapler. <laughs> and that'll hold our plants on the wall when they start growing. So you're starting to do this in a grid pattern now? Yes, about 20 by 20 centimetre squares, and we'll put our plants in the middle of those gaps. 
Now you're cutting corners. That's so that we can fold the felt underneath the board and staple it to the back of the board. OK, Jerry, can you give me a hand to flip it over? Now the irrigation. We're going to put a stopper in the end of this 19 millimetre pipe. And at the other end, I'm putting an elbow. And I'm putting a four mil dripper about every five centimetres along this pipe. We just fold that into the felt on the front side. So that's the top of the board. The drippers will drip water through the felt and water the plants. That's the idea here. This felt will stop the legs poking through the plastic. So you've gone for anthuriums and maidenhairs again? Well, they worked so well on the last wall, and we thought we'd use them on this one as well. So now I've put crosses where we're going to put our anthuriums, and I've put lines where we're going to put our maidenhair ferns. Make each cut 10 to 15 centimetres. The pump goes in at the bottom, and we connect that with the vertical pipe to the elbow at the top. Enough. It's a traditional aquaponic system and so it doesn't rely on the, uh, the soil, it uh, relies on the felt and having the roots grow through the felt. While that's filling up, we'll put some staples on these plants to hold them in. One either side and one on the bottom. So really, this is the same as planting in soil. The roots need to be in intimate contact with the growing medium. Yes, absolutely. OK. Well, it's looking good. It is. I've just added the water conditioner uh, for the does, fish. Does that take out the chlorine? It does. It removes the chlorine and it puts a protective slime over the outside of the fish so they're not too stressed. Uh, all that remains is to let our fish acclimatise to the temperature and then we can flick on the pump, get the water flowing through to the plants. Well, they seem quite happy in there. They certainly are. How much maintenance would a, a wall like this take? Look, not a lot. Uh, for a system like this, I'd probably spray it every two weeks with a liquid seaweed fertiliser, and I'd change the water every two or three months. And how long before this resembles the wall behind it? I'd say about three months, but the one behind it is a year ahead, so there's a little bit of catching up for it to do. And how much would it cost? Uh, this little system, including the plants and the fish, was about uh, $480.